Shalom, my Israelite brothers and sisters. So first of all, praises to our Elohim and to his only begotten son, Yehoshua. So I'm going to be dealing with a topic that some Hebrews feel very uncomfortable talking about. And we're going to be talking about fringes. Now, I'm not here to tell you that you have to wear fringes. Because if I tell you that you have to wear fringes, then it's coming from me and not the word of the Most High. And I don't want to get in the way of that. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go through the scriptures and we're going to let the word of the Most High tell us what we need to do concerning fringes. Is that fair enough, brothers and sisters? That's what we're going to deal with. Because after this lesson, it's going to be super clear what the purpose of fringes are and what we need to be doing. And by the end of this lesson, this is going to be between you and the Spirit of the Most High and not between me and you. So if there's any issues that you have concerning fringes after this lesson, then that's something that you're going to have to take up with the Most High and not me. Brothers and sisters, my main purpose and mission for this whole journey and this walk is to lead as many people, brothers and sisters, to the laws, commandments, and statutes and sound the trumpet. That is my only mission, and I'm going to keep on doing that until they shut down YouTube, whenever that's going to be. So I'm going to keep sounding the alarm and encouraging Yah's chosen people to get back to these laws, commandments, and statutes. But let me ask you something, saints. Why would you not want to be a set-apart people? Why would you not want to be different from the rest of the heathens? And there's a reason why the Most High called us to be set apart. Because we were chosen of his own. We are the apple of Yah's eyes. And I don't understand sometimes why our people would not want to be set apart. And fringes was just one of those laws that set us apart. Now, I normally get questions about fringes. I've gotten questions like this. Well, if our forefathers wore fringes and they still sin, then what's the purpose of wearing fringes? Well, guess what? Our forefathers kept the laws and they still sin. You see, I think where Hebrews get mixed up at is that it wasn't the fringes, it wasn't the keeping of the laws that caused Israel to sin. You know, if they would have just sinned within Israel, that's what the sacrifices was for. That's what the Most High had all that set up for. It was when Israel, our forefathers, it was when they started going outside the nation of Israel after the heathens after the other nations, after their foreign women, after their gods. You see, that's what, got our, that's what got our forefathers in trouble and into slavery. You know, if they were just sinning within Israel, they had the sacrifices for that. But it was when they went outside of that. That was forbidden, brothers and sisters, and that's what jacked our forefathers up. Now, I'm not saying in no wise that it was a good thing for them to sin within Israel because it wasn't. You know, sin is sin. But when they went after these foreign nations, that did them in. Can't get around it. So it had nothing to do with the wearing of fringes. It had nothing to do with keeping the laws. It was when they started going outside of Israel after these heathen nations. And that's how they broke the commandments. So let me ask you a question, saints. So just because our forefathers were wearing fringes and they were keeping the laws and they still sinned and went into slavery, does that mean that we make void the law today? Yah forbid, brothers and sisters, we establish the laws. Now, just because our forefathers were sinning, whether they were wearing fringes or not, whether, whether they were keeping the laws, doesn't make an excuse for us to throw the laws, commandments, and statutes out the windows, brothers and sisters. That's a dangerous thing, a very dangerous thing. And there's some Hebrews that are teaching that. So this is what we're going to do in this lesson. I want to make it very clear to all of you. We're going to talk about who 
wore the fringes. We're going to talk about why, because that's important. We need to understand why the fringes are being worn and why our forefathers wore the fringes. And then we're going to discuss the purpose. So we're going to discuss three, these three categories because I feel led by the Spirit of the Most High that this is a very important subject to talk about. Because I'm going to tell you something, and I'm seeing, and this, I'm going to tell you what I'm experiencing right now. And I'm seeing a lot of Hebrews getting back to the customs of our forefathers. I'm starting to run into more Hebrews that are wearing their fringes, that are doing the practices of their forefathers, getting back to these laws, commandments, and statutes. Now, I understand that we have a lot of new people who are coming up. I get a lot of people coming on my post. You know, I've been in this truth for about a month, about a couple of weeks now. All praises to the Most High, you know. But as we're growing, brothers and sisters, as we start growing and we're getting stronger and we're growing in this word and knowledge, you know, it's going to be time to make a change. And don't worry, because if you're really sincere in your heart and if you're allowing the Ruach Kokodesh to really work in your mind and spirit, you're going to progress and you're going to want to do those things that the Most High is telling you to do in his word. And it's not going to be a question of authority. You're going to do it. But we're going to talk about all that stuff. We're going to talk about, like I said, we're going to talk about the who. We're going to talk about the why. And we're going to talk about the purpose. And prayerfully, after this lesson, you will have a very clear understanding of fringes. But what I first want to do is this. Because some of you are probably wondering, what in the world are fringes? You know, I got some questions like that, too. I'm like, some, for some brothers, they were like, what in the world are fringes? So what I want to do next is I want to show you some ancient pictures of our forefathers, some carvings that they've been hiding away under the Vatican. Because, see, they have pictures of our forefathers. Did y'all know under the Vatican they have the real picture of Yehoshua? They have all our stuff. They, all the things that they stole out of our forefathers' temple in Jerusalem, they got it stored under the Vatican. And that's no joke. All right, so let's get ready to look at some ancient pictures, and then we're going to look at some current day fringes as well, too. So check check this out. Now, I want you to look carefully, look at the bottom. You can see in these carvings of our forefathers, the Hebrew Israelites, you can literally see the fringes at the bottom, and then you can see the strip that was the border of blue that went around the fringes, and that's how they wore their fringes. Now, of course, back in those days, they had longer garments, and we don't wear the same garments today. So, of course, it's not going to look the same. And that's why I'm going to show you the modern day fringes, what, where fringes would be sold on today in our clothing. So I want to just want to just just to show you this picture here. And this is actually a real carving of our forefathers. Pretty neat, huh? And this stuff is all over Europe. You know, they're not trying to hide anything. Now, let's check out this next picture. And you can kind of see how they have a little things around them. And then when it gets to the bottom, you'll be able to see the fringes towards the bottom as well, too. All right, let's look at the next one. So this one is similar to the first one we saw. And if you look towards the bottom, all through their garments, you can see the fringes, especially towards the bottom. And you still can see that little strip, that little border that was the border of blue. And this was just one of the laws that set our forefathers apart from the other nations. Now, there are traces of other nations outside of Israel wearing fringes, but that don't make them Israelites. It's because they got it from our forefathers. You know, and everything that our forefathers did, all the other nations always got those things from them. So this is a prime example. But let's fast forward today. Now, how would modern day fringes look like today? So you see this blue shirt? You'll see the fringes and you see the border of blue. That's how they would look today. So for those of you who've never seen fringes, you have no idea what I'm talking about. You don't know what fringes are. This is how they would look on your shirt. And we're going to be getting into scripture as well. And we're going to be talking about the importance. We're going to talk about the three categories that we discussed earlier. The, the who, why, and the purpose. Now, notice how this shirt with the fringes, with the gold fringes, with the border of blue... 
look how it looks similar to the first two pictures we saw of the ancient pictures of our forefathers. They just had them at the bottom of their garments because their garments were a lot longer. But because we don't wear those kind of garments today, we just wear them around our shirts. So I, that's why I wanted to show you this one because it almost looks similar to the first two pictures. Now take a look at this one. For those of you who have a question about how would fringes look on a dress. So this is how it would look on a dress. And you see a lot of Shebrews wearing their fringes like that as well too. I mean, it's very beautiful, brothers and sisters. It's a beautiful thing to really get back to our forefathers' custom because they belong to us. That's who we are. These are our customs. They don't belong to nobody else. Now, the next picture I want to show you is actually someone made their own fringes because we understand that not everybody can go out and afford fringes. And you can get fringes anywhere. You can get fringes at Walmart. You can get them at Hobby Lobby. You can get them at Michael's. You can get them at any, pretty much any arts and crafts store. But here's an example of someone making their own fringes. And you can also buy those fringe scissors too, where it cuts it like, make them look like fringes. And someone actually sold their own border of blue. So there's many ways that you can do fringes. You know, there's lessons online. I mean, we, we live in the information age. So, you, you know, you can go on YouTube and you can find all kind of things on fringes. There's a lot of Hebrews on YouTube who gives demonstrations, who gives sewing lessons on how to make fringes. And even, even if you don't know how to sew, you know, you can sew them on yourself. Now, you couldn't tell me 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago, that I would be touching any kind of sewing machine. I would have told you you were crazy. But here I am, I got a sewing machine, and I sold, all, I sold all my fringes on my shirts. So I took some lessons on YouTube, and I just went from there. But it was because I felt the moving of the Holy Spirit of my heart. Because I'm a type of person, I don't like showcase. I don't like being noticed, you know, and, and I hate that. So it, it took me a minute to, to get to that point. But, I mean, I, but after that, I jumped into it right and you know, no time, and I was wearing my fringes and everything. And it's, I mean, brothers and sisters, it's a great feeling, and I haven't been the same since. Well, I haven't been the same since, since I've been in this truth. But you all know what I mean. Now, the next picture I want to show you is these Khazars, these devilish Khazars who claim to be Jews. Now, they do wear tassels on their stuff, and I've seen Hebrews wear the tassels like this too. But the only thing is, they don't have the border of blue around theirs, you know, and these Khazars was just convert, but we know what's getting ready to happen to them. But I just wanted to show you this picture and demonstration of what these wicked Khazars, how they do it. And, but we have some of my Hebrew brothers, they kind of wear them like that as well too. I've seen the tassels on their uh, four corners and everything. So that's pretty much the idea I want to show you, just give you some visuals of some pictures of some fringes and all of that. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Numbers chapter 15. And we're going to read verses 37 all the way down to verse 40. And then we're going to come back and break down each verse. Starting with verse 37. And Elohim spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe the border of a ribbon of blue and it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of Elohim and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye used to go a whoring that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your Elohim okay so now let's start with verse 37 where it says, And Elohim spake unto Moses, saying, Now we got to realize, saying, this is Elohim speaking unto Moses. He's getting ready to give a command. So let's see what this command is. Let's look at verse 38. It says, Speak unto the children of Israel. Who would the, who would the children of Israel be? It would be our forefathers. Are we not the seed as well of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? So it says, speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes 
in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So I want to talk about this throughout their generation. Now notice it didn't say until a certain time or when a certain generation ends. It says throughout their generations. That means a continuation of the keeping of this commandment that the Most High is given Moses. So this is a command from the Most High. So this is not something that we need to take lightly or disregard. This is part of the laws as well. So what I want to do now is I want to deal with another precept that deals with keeping something throughout their generation. Okay, let's go with to Exodus. Exodus chapter 31, and we're going to read verse 16. It says, Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. That means everlasting. Everlasting, never ending. That's what that means. Now, if you go to Exodus chapter 20 and you read verse 8, and dealing with the fourth commandment, it says, Six days shalt thy labor and do all thy work, but the Shabbat is the seventh day. So that's telling you that it's a, the, the Shabbat is a weekly cycle Sabbath. Now, that's not to include the feast days. Do we have our feast days like your Passover, like your day of Pentecost, which starts off as a Shabbat. But we're talking about the weekly Shabbat brothers. So this is the sixth day that you have the labor. And then that seventh day, which is the Shabbat, that's the day that we honor and rest on. And we, were, and we are to keep this throughout our generations. And are we not of the seed of Isaac, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? You know, now if you're not the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then I guess you have nothing to worry about then. You don't need, this doesn't apply to you. So the point that I want to bring out to you is that these laws are to be kept throughout our generations from our forefathers to this present day and our children. You know, if, if the Most High came back by then. So if our forefathers had to wear fringes and keep the laws, then what makes you think that we don't have to wear fringes today? So this is why I don't understand with some Hebrews. It doesn't make any sense. They like to say, you know, our forefathers, they wore the fringes, but they don't have to wear them today. But I'm going to show you a verse that some Hebrews use to try to justify uh, not wearing fringes. But if you use that verse, then you might as well use that verse to justify not keeping any of y'all's laws. Because that's what the Christians do. You know, the Christians, they love to use certain verses and scriptures to say that the laws are done away with. And wearing fringes are part of the laws, brothers and sisters. We cannot get around that. Whether you want to accept it or not, it's not coming from me. So, hey, don't hate the messenger. And I told you earlier, I'm here to, my main purpose is to lead as many as y'all's people back to these laws, commandments, and statutes and to sound this trumpet. That's it. I mean, I can care whether you like me or not. I'm going to keep on doing this. So now we just covered the who. And the who would involve the wearing of fringes was only given to the Israelites, just like the rest of the laws were only given to the Israelites and no other nations. Now let's talk about the why. Why are fringes important? Why did our forefathers wear them then? And then why do we need to wear them today? So let's go with a, uh, let's go with a verse 39 of Numbers chapter 15. And I'm going to read that, verse 39. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of Elohim and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, and after which ye used to go a whoring. Now let's go back up to verse 39. And I'm going to read that again. And it shall be unto you a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember. That's the why. So what do we need to remember? Remember all the commandments of Elohim. Not just remember them, but do them. 
So this is the why that we really need to pay attention to, because this is what the Most High is telling us to remember. Now, there's another commandment that starts with remember, and it's in Exodus 20, verse 8, and it says, remember, this, remember the Shabbat to keep it holy. Then it gives us six days to labor to do all our works and all the things that we need to do, but that seventh day is the day of rest. That's that weekly Shabbat cycle, and that's something that we keep all throughout our generations. I'm going to prove that to you as well. But when you look at this, and when you see this, it's, it's straight up telling us this is why we need to remember so we do not forget. Now, this is where the question comes in at because you have some brews that are say, well, our forefathers wore fringes, but they still forgot. So why do we need to wear fringes today? And then again, it wasn't the wearing of fringes that caused our forefathers to sin. It was them going after the other nations, after their gods and all their other stuff that caused. So that's the why. So now let's look at the purpose. So I'm going to start with, uh, after remember, it says, we remember and, and all the commandments of, the, of Elohim and do them. And that ye, here's another clue right here. And this is the purpose. This is the very purpose of the fringes. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes. So the whole purpose of the fringes were the fact that we could look down upon them and remember all the commandments of Elohim. And it was to remind us on a daily basis not to seek our own ways after our own hearts and after our own eyes. So let me ask you this. Why is the Most High stressing that we should not be looking to our own heart and to our own eyes? Because when we do that as a people, this is where our forefathers messed up at. Because they wanted to be like the other nations. They started looking at their own eyes and onto their own ways, thinking that they knew more than Elohim. So Elohim says, okay, I'm going to let you do your thing. I'm going to let you have your kings because you want your kings. You want to be like the other nations. You're not satisfied with just having judges over you, but the Most High let them do it. And look, we, look where we are today, brothers and sisters. We are at the bottom. And again, it's because our forefathers decided they wanted to be like the other nations and go after them, go after their gods and their idols and their foreign women. And we're doing that today, the same thing. Why do you think that 70% of our so-called black people, they marry outside their race or they date outside their race? I don't know what it is. It's just, it's a cycle that's keep repeating itself. What we know is the curses that are being played out in our people. So that's the point I want to bring out to you. So, but let me give you a precept to seeking not after your own heart and your own eyes so we can get a better understanding of that. All right, let's go over to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, trust in Elohim with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. And that's important, brothers and sisters, that we don't lean unto our own understanding because it always leads to the wrong way. You know, the Bible says there, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end are thereof are to, uh, of, of destruction. So it may seem like our forefathers in their own eyes were trying to do the right thing by trying to maybe be political with these other nations, but it turned into destruction. It led to their slavery, their captivity, which put us at the bottom to this very day. So that's why these laws, commandments, and statutes are very important. It's not something that we should take lightly. Now, the verse that some Hebrews like to use to say we don't have to wear fringes is in Hebrews, and we're going to cover that, where it says, I will write, I will write my laws in their hearts and their minds. That has nothing to do with not wearing fringes. There is, there is nowhere in the Bible that tells us to stop wearing fringes, brothers and sisters. Now, we just read in Numbers 15 that it says it would be, it would be throughout our generations. That means a continuation. So nobody has ever showed me, I have not had one Hebrew who could show me where it says to stop wearing fringes at a particular time. You know, are we not the seed of our forefathers? So that means we've got to continue to do those things. And that's part of the law. All right, let's look at another verse dealing with fringes. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 22, and we're going to read verse 12. And it says, Thou shalt make the fringes upon the four quarters of thy vestures. And notice it says quarters, not corners. 
Some Hebrews get that mixed up with corners, and this does not translate to corners. Um, quarters is an area of space on your garment. So it's talking about the exact same thing as was talking about in Numbers chapter 15. And where and says, wherewith thou coverest thyself. So I'll read that again. Thou shalt make the fringes upon the four quarters of thy vestures, wherewith thou coverest thyself. So it's talking about the exact same thing that's talking about in Numbers chapter 15. But some brews get that mixed, mixed up because they think it's talking about just the corners, the four corners. That's why you see some brews that wear the tassels like the Khazars were with the little strings coming down uh, on the four corners. Now let's go over to Matthew chapter 9 and verse 20. Let's see if our Hamashiach wore fringes. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him from behind the Hamashiach and touched the hem of his garments. Now I highlighted him for a reason because if you look this up in the Hebrew and Greek, you'll find out that it means fringes or tassels. Now, I'm going to show you. We're going to go to the Strong's coordinates next. And I'm going to show you that it means just that. So that way you can see with your own eyes that our Hamashiach actually wore fringes. I thought that was pretty neat, you know, when I did this research a while back ago. Let's go ahead and take to the Strong's coordinates here. So there's two verses that deals with that. Matthew 9, 20. You can also go to uh, Matthew 14, 36. But we're going to look at 28, 99 in the back of the Strong's so we can get the full meaning of the hymn. All right, 28, 28, 99. So look what it says. And I'm going to read over. Look at the second line. It says, a fringe or tassels border him. Pretty amazing, isn't it, brothers and sisters? So that's what the hem actually means. And you can do further research and you'll see it for yourself. But what I want to talk about now is this, because you have a lot of first day Christians. Of course, we know that Christianity teaches that all of the laws are done away with. Now, the laws are divided into five subcategories. And you know we have your moral laws, your marriage, your civil, and of course, your dietary laws. And then your sacrificial law was the only law that was fulfilled because that was fulfilled by the Hamashiach's death. So we, don't, we no longer have to offer sacrifices. We, are, we have our sacrificial lamb. He is the holy Hamashiach. So, but your first day Christians, they teach that all the laws, because they, what they do is they group them all together, and they're confused about the sacrificial laws, and they're thinking that the sacrificial laws are the, all the laws, so they group everything together and they throw them out the window. And now you have a new movement among these Christians that call themselves Christian Hebrews. And they do the exact same thing. You know, they claim to be Hebrew Israelites, but they don't believe in keeping any of the laws. They don't believe that we have to keep the laws at all. So that's just as bad as Christianity. So it's really, I mean, you know, Satan always has a way of trying to counterfeit things because he knows that the true people of the Most High are waking up. So Satan is going to come in even amongst our people and try to throw a wrench in there and then try to confuse everything. Yeah, just call yourselves Hebrew, but at the same time, still tell your people that the laws are done away with. Tell your people that they no, they no longer have to abide by the laws. And brothers and sisters, I hate to break it to you, but that's worse than Christianity. You might as well just stay in Christianity. You might as well be, just become an atheist. Better yet, you know, you have a better chance at being an atheist than you would just telling your people that you no longer have to keep the laws. Turn with me in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10, and we're going to read verse 16. Now, this is the first day Christians' very favorite, well, one of favorite verses besides John 3.16. And this is also some Hebrews' favorite verse as well, too, to support that we no longer have to keep any of the laws or wear fringes. So let's look at verse 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. With who after those days? It's talking about us, brothers and sisters. Saith Elohim, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. Now, we need to understand the full context of this verse. It's not talking about not having to keep the laws. And this is what the first day Christians run to all the time to support that. Well, we have them in our heart now. We don't have to keep them. So if that's the case, if you're saying that this verse is talking about not having to keep the laws, then why keep the weekly Shabbat? 
Why keep the Passover? Why wear fringes? So you have to apply everything. You have to apply it all. You can't just say that this is only applying to fringes. It's not. So what it means to write Yah's laws in our hearts and our minds, because there was a time where we, where, where we forgot. What was that time period that we forgot about Yah's laws? It was during slavery. Because remember, it says in Deuteronomy that when the yokes of iron will come off, we will be destroyed as a people. But who is waking us up right now? It is the spirit of the Most High. Well, who is bringing us back to these laws, commandments, and statutes? It is the spirit of the Most High. Why? Because the law has always been buried in our hearts. We just didn't know it was there until the, most, the, to, to, until the spirit of the Most High started to awaken his people. And that's what this verse is talking about. It has nothing to do with not keeping the laws at all. So you got to be very careful, Hebrews, not to use this verse to justify uh, not wearing fringes or not keeping any of Yah's laws. That's very dangerous. And I'm going to make it plain to you. Now, after this lesson, I don't mind people coming on my posts and I'll even respond. But if you start to take up an issue with me about wearing fringes, well, guess what? I'm not going to I'm not going to even respond to you because you need to take it up with the most high. Because guess what? I'm not the one who gave the command to wear fringes. I'm not the one who gave the command to keep any of the laws. So I'm in the same boat as you are, brothers and sisters. I have to be obedient, just like everybody else. i got to work out my own fear and salvation with trembling, just like everybody else. So I'm going to abide by the laws of the Most High best way I can, because I love the laws of the Most High. Now, that's me. I can only speak for myself. I can't speak for you all because, you know, you some of you may have issues with the law, and then that's that's between you and the Most High. So I'm just letting you know straight, straight up, you know, you come on my page with some crazy comments saying that we don't got to wear fringes. I'm not going to even bother to answer you. I'm just going to ignore you because you got to take that up with the most high. Now, here's the question that I normally get with fringes. And I know some, some people are going to probably ask this question on the comment board. So, will not wearing fringes keep me from the kingdom of heaven? Well, let me ask you this. Will not keeping any of Yah's laws keep you from the kingdom of heaven? Let me give you the prime example. You should ask, go ask our forefathers if not keeping the laws, commandments, and statutes will keep them from the kingdom. Well, they broke the laws. Look what happened to our forefathers. There's your answer, brothers and sisters. Need I say any more? Need I go any further? I think you got the big picture now. Now, I get it. There's a lot of us who are coming in in this faith. And, you know, the Most High is not going to expect you to go cold turkey. So I want you to understand that, brothers and sisters. We have a lot of new people who are just waking up into this faith. And it's not going to happen overnight. But as you're growing in this faith, and that the more time that you spend in this faith, you know, things are going to change. You're going to, you're going to, have, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and you're going to want to excel in your faith. You're going to want to get back to those things that our forefathers did. So I'm not saying that you got to just go the next day and just strap on some fringes. I'm not saying that, brothers and sisters. It has to be the working of the Holy Spirit in you. So I want to make that very, very clear so nobody takes this message the wrong way because I'm trying to get you to see the big picture. I'm trying to get you to see the love for the commandments and laws and statutes like I have them. But, I, you know, you can only lead a person, you can only lead a horse to the, to the waters. You can't make the horse drink. And that's where you come in at, brother and sister. You have to do the research yourself. You have to want it. And if you don't want it, then, I mean, I don't care. I can speak about fringes till I'm blue in the face. It's not going to mean anything. And it's the same way with the other laws. I can speak about the Shabbat, the laws. And if you have no interest in keeping any of the laws, then, hey, I mean, there's, there's nothing I can do. You know, so that's that's between you and the most high. You know, the Bible says that in the days of ignorance, the Most High winked at. So when we're caught up in Christianity, we didn't know any better. You know, the Most High wasn't expecting us to just come into these laws. But when he woke us up and he gave us that consciousness, it's time to make a change. It is time to make a change. You cannot stay the same the way you are. So that's my whole point. So and, you know, in this lesson, I just wanted to bring that out to you guys. So you give you opportunity to see it. Like I've seen it, like our forefathers see it. 
so that you can just do a fair assessment on this. And I, I would encourage you to do a further study on this as well, too. But I pray that you were edified. I pray that you understood the points that was brought out in the fringes. We covered the why and we covered the who, the why and the purpose of the fringes. And now you should have a complete understanding on these three categories and their whole purposes. So and I pray that you guys got it. So before I move on and close out, there's something I want to share with you. Now, I reorganized my playlist because I've been having questions. People have been asking me, can you do a lesson on the Shabbat when I've already done a lesson on the Shabbat? So I think they might have a hard time trying to find the lessons because there's a lot of videos in the search. So you have to scroll through. So what I've done is reorganize my playlist. So if you click on playlist, just click on my playlist. I organized my playlist by categories. So what I really want to focus on, I'm just going to give a rundown. I have the Bible readings. I got the Hebrew music, music and then you'll see high holy days. So everything that's dealing with the law will, is going to be in that category. So like this lesson right here is going to be in high holy days because it's dealing with the laws. And then I got titled prophecy lessons. You can find that. I got the scripture lessons, show for blowing and the awakening. So if you click on my playlist, you'll be able to find the videos that you need a lot easier than just having to try to scroll in the video search to try to find a video you're looking for. So, but with that being said, I'm going to leave you with Revelation chapter 14, 12. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Elohim and have the faith of Yehoshua. So brothers and sisters, I pray that you will continue to remain strong, continue to study like you never studied before, because it's not going to be long. We're seeing things happening at a rapid rate. And I'm telling you, it's, it's getting ready to get really hot. So, and again, it's an honor to serve my Israelite brothers and sisters scattered to the four corners of the earth. And I say shalom and stay strong.